Hi y'all, this is So So Blessed. Welcome to the Blessed Place. How y'all doing? I just did a video about dealing with grief and I need to lighten the mood. So this video is all about when you see crazy coming, cross the street. When you are in a dating or potentially a potential dating situation and you see crazy coming, I'm telling you, Cross the street, run. There's a, there's a song we sing in church. Run, don't look back. Run, don't look back. Run for your life and don't look back. Be like, uh, who was it? Lot's wife? I mean, don't be like Lot's wife because she, she looked back and was turned to a pillow of salt. Don't look back. Um, now, a lot of times when we meet, and this is mostly for the ladies, but men, my blessed ones, my men blessed ones, you can, whatever I'm saying, you can change this to the female form because all of this is just interchangeable. But ladies, when we meet that guy, men, when we meet that woman, when y'all meet the woman, it is going to be so clothed in abs and booty and nice clothing and cleavage and smell good stuff and nice bald head or a nice um, uh, dreads or nice low cut or nice nicely sculptured beard or some nice LL Cool J lips. Um, it's going to be so clothed in all of that in the visual that you're not going to see crazy because crazy is underneath those pot of abs and crazy is underneath that pop, pop pop butt and crazy lives underneath all that cleavage and so you can so easily be fooled by crazy but because crazy doesn't just come at you crazy when someone steps to you with their pickup line they're not stepping to you crazy they're stepping to you with their best pickup line therefore Crazy is so hard to detect at first. But after you're in this dating situation or relationship for a few weeks or a few months, then crazy starts to rear its crazy and often ugly head. So I'm just going to give you, but you know what? But often we're taken by surprise, but we shouldn't be because there are hints. There are hints to crazy. So let's get started. I'm giving you 10 tips on how to detect crazy underneath all of that good old visual stuff. And then I have a bonus tip. Tip number one, this person is very nice, but only to you. Y'all go on a date, this person is nasty to the hostess person is nasty um, and frustrated and complaining and um, condescending towards the waiter or waitress. Um, this person is snappy when it comes to dealing with business on the telephone. You start to realize, you know, you think, oh, this, he is so nice or she is so nice. But then you start realizing that they're not so nice to other people. So you want to pay attention to that. A man or a woman who's only nice to you is not a nice person. Number two, you detect little subtle hints of violence or anger. Um, maybe you've Maybe the person has hit the dashboard with their fist. Maybe the person has hit the wall and put a hole in the wall. Or maybe you visited this person's apartment or house for the first time and you say, what's up with this hole in the wall? Oh, I got mad and I smashed it with my fist. Ding, 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 ding. That is a hint that this person has anger issues and cannot rise above their emotions. So you better be careful because next it won't be the wall, it could possibly be you. Number three, if this person has crazy exes coming out of the woodwork, calling you, texting you, 
coming to your house, um, putting stuff on the internet about you and Facebook about you, and um, keying your car and busting your tires and all of that. Crazy exes coming and baby mamas coming out of the woodwork and doing things to you or doing things even to him. Run, don't look back because we attract to ourselves what we are. So yes, we all go through emotional pain when we break up and sometimes we do things that are out of our character. But if somebody is being violent like that towards you, if an ex is being violent like that towards you, you're saying, you know, think to yourself, is this the kind of women you deal with? This is the kind of women you have dealt with in the past? No, you don't want any part of that. If that's the kind of woman or women that he has dealt with in the past, he is not the kind of man that you want. I'm telling you, it makes a difference just paying attention to what caliber of character what caliber of woman, what caliber of man it has he or she dealt with in the past. And when this person has dealt with classy people, even in your pain and in your hurt and in the midst of breakup, you still handle it with class. Number four, are you dealing with a cheater? No, I don't mean cheating on you as far as infidelity because the relationship is new. So no, he may not be cheating on you right now, but is he cheating on his taxes? Is he cheating on his timesheet at work? Is he cheating when it comes to games? Uh, is, it, is he cheating on things like that in his life? Because believe me, your relationship, it's next. It, it's all about integrity. Just the little smallest things like that speaks to a man or woman's integrity. Number five, is he or is she inconsiderate of your time? They're always late. They don't call when they say they're going to call. Or they don't text when they say they're going to text. They don't show up when they say they're going to show up. Uh, they either they don't show up at all or they show up hour or 30 minutes late, hour late, hours late, and they always got some reason and some elaborate excuse. This person is inconsiderate of your time. And after a while, they're going to be inconsiderate of much more than your time. They're going to be inconsiderate of your feelings, inconsiderate of... Uh, your dreams and considerate of your goals and your vision and considerate of your relationship. Believe me, like I say, it starts small, very subtly, almost imperceptibly. But that's why I'm here to bring it to you so that when you see it, when you see it happening, you can say, hmm. Now, any one particular of these things might not be a reason to stop dating that person but watch take stock and say hmm okay that's one of those things so so blessed mentioned hmm that's two of those things that she mentioned that's five out of the eleven they violated about five or six of them okay run don't look back run don't look back number six does he or does she speak ill of their ex or exes? Even the crazy one that's slashing the tire and putting out stuff on Facebook. Even if that person is acting like that. Is he speaking ill? Speaking, saying all kinds of things about that person. Trying to bring that person down speaking horribly about their character. Like I say, even if this person is the worst person, you're, you're who, the person you're dating, they should be handling that with class. And a lot of times, especially if a man is calling a woman a B, she very well may be exhibiting, exhibiting characteristics of a B, but he should not be calling her that, especially not in your presence. Um, and a lot of times men will talk disparagingly about their exes and we think it's cute 
you know, we think, ha, 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 oh, he really doesn't want her anymore. Oh, he because he called her a B. Oh, because he did. I can tell y'all I had an ex, my baby's daddy. Yeah, I'll go ahead and put, it, put him out there. I'll put him on front street like that. And I could tell he was getting a little too close to this woman when we were together. But he called her all kinds of names. He said she was obnoxious, she was a B, she wasn't his type, she was this and she was that. Uh, yeah, come to find out they were cheating. Yeah, uh-huh. Yeah, cheating on moi. So, honey, him calling her all kinds of names and calling her a B, that does not guarantee that you are in there and she is out of there. You know, they'll say all kinds of things to get what they want. Not all men, um, not all men, but some, many. So if he is calling her out of her name, talking disparagingly about her, then he, run, don't look back, run, don't look back. Because <laughs> next, it's going to be you. You're going to be the B. And you know what B word I'm talking about? Oh, number seven, this is a big one. I hate this. If he is speaking derogatory about his mom, oh my God, if he calls his mom the B word, Run! You better be like Flo Joe. You better be like Jackie John or Kersey. You better be like, um, uh, what's that Bolt guy? Usain Bolt. Run! Don't look back. Run! If he calls his mama the B word or he speaks de uh, derogatory about his mom, I don't care if his mom left him on the doorstep. I don't care if his mom left him in the house full of roaches. I don't care if his mom brought. 20 men in and out of her house. I don't care what mama did. No, that does not make it right. But if he is talking derogatory or, or uh, disparagingly about his mom, run. Like I say, run because there are underlying issues that are going on there. And it speaks to his character and his integrity if he is talking about his mom like that. And like I say, any man that talks about his mom like that, believe me, you are next. And a lot of us, like I say, women, we think it's cute. We think it's funny. You know, oh, his mama is this, his mama is, is that. She didn't take good care of him or, you know, whatever it is. And we're um, in agreement with them. or We think that it's funny, but no, it's not funny uh, when a man talks de derogatory, a man or a woman talks derogatorily about their their parent, you know, especially their mom. Number eight, if he or she exaggerates, or maybe they're not even exaggerating, maybe they're just bragging about what they have, about the value of what they have, or how much they pay for something, or they're bragging about material things, or they're bragging to you about what they drive and the Rolex that's on their arm, and how much they, how many six and seven figures they make, and what they're wearing, and the Jordans, how much they pay for the Jordans, and all. If somebody is bragging and boasting and all of that to you, I'm telling you, run. It, yeah, it sounds good. I know, folk, I'm a woman. I'm a woman. Yeah, I'm a woman. I know it sounds good when you meet a man and he tell and you know and he's driving this and he's wearing that. But that is something you can find out on your own. If y'all date long enough, you can find this stuff out on your own. He does not have to brag about it. Believe me, if he is bragging about this stuff, he is overcompensating for something. I mean, it could be something like uh, down there. <laughs> or it could be something uh, like up there. Or it could be something like in there, in his heart. But it's somewhere, that head, another head, in his heart. So he's overcompensating if he has to brag and exaggerate about what he has and how much he paid for it and how much he make uh, makes. And all. So I'm telling you, women, it sounds good. But do not be deceived by a man who's laying it all out for you about how much he makes and how much he paid for this and how, oh, um, how I could, you know, I, oh, I could 
I could buy this if I wanted to do that or, or, or a man. And I hate this too. When I'm in the presence of a man and he's belittling another man, he's trying to make another man seem smaller, seem less than so he can look bigger and larger and more valuable, valuable in front of his woman and to impress his woman. Oh, that is so unimpressive to me. Not only is it unimpressive, it is disgusting to me. I hate that because I am perceptive enough to know that you are overcompensating, that your self-esteem is so little that you have to belittle someone else because you feel little. When you belittle, it's because you belittle. Number nine, number nine kind of lends itself to the same, lends itself closely to what I just said, number eight. But when he or she belittles other people, but they esteem celebrities and esteem athletes and esteem uh, pe famous people, you know, um, believe me, I, I love celebs. I love on Twitter. I have celebrities who actually follow me on Twitter. It's awesome. I love tweeting with them. You know, I love reading their tweets. But I'm not so enamored with them that I place the, a higher value on them than other people. It's like I'm just as happy to tweet with someone with five followers and and nobody really knows. And I'm just as happy as tweeting with, you know, celebrities. Um, so I don't place a higher value on, on, on celebrities or athletes or, or bishops and et cetera than I do on my everyday average ordinary but extraordinary people. Um, so I hate when a man or woman uh, places a lower value on, say, us regular people, but then try to esteem celebs and want to be like them. And so if you, you're, if, you know, if you're dating someone and they're bragging about who they hang out with or who they know or who they're related to and all of that, run, don't look back, run, don't look back. Number 10, if he is cheating with you, y'all met, and you know he has someone else, you know he's married or he has a girlfriend or fiance, but you have decided to participate in that messy situation, you have decided to be the other woman, if he is cheating with you, he will, he shall cheat on you. Now, I'm not trying to judge you because I have been there. I have done that. I'm telling you, when I was out there in the world before I gave my life to Christ, my mentality, believe it or not, yes, Deidre, so, so blessed, first lady. My mentality was, if you weren't married, I didn't want you. Because I didn't want you to want anything more than what I was giving you, which was basically my body. And so, when... But, ooh, thank God, for a mind change. So, I'm not judging you. I have been there. I have done that. But there comes a time. But that was in my early, early 20s. 19, 20, 21, 22. But there comes a time when you mature out of that mess and that messy situation. There comes a time when you put away childish things. And that is very childish and immature to cheat with someone uh, who you know has a girlfriend or a wife, um, a fiance or something like that. Um, I know a lot of times they don't tell you the truth. That's why you got to do a little investigating. You got to keep your eyes open. You got to look beyond those abs and that nice smile and them uh, cool J lips and them nice dreads or that nice haircut. You got to look beyond all of that. And look at the little imperceptible things that I'm mentioning here. So just remember, y'all, if you're cheating with him, he's going to cheat on you. Number 11, and lastly, the bonus. If he is not supporting his children or his child, if he is not giving them financial support, emotional support, parental guidance, then 
he is not going to be a great father for, for your kids. Just, you know, a lot of times when, you know, just to put it out there, I'm not man bashing. Y'all know I love my mans. But a lot of times a man will be a good father and a good provider while he's in that home with you. But if he is not in that home with you, a lot of times he is not being a great supporter financially, emotionally, etc. for his children. Not all. Not all men. Don't get mad, men. Not all of y'all. Some of y'all are dabomb.com. But I find through my own experience that a lot of times if the man is not, if the father is not in the home with the child and the mother, then he's not um, as great a child, you know, uh, supporter as far as financially, emotionally, etc. And if a man has a child or children and he is not giving that support to his child or his children, I'm telling you, run, don't look back. I mean, you may want to talk to him about it. You may want to encourage him um, to support his child or his children. He may get with you because a lot of times a man just needs a good woman by his side. He needs a woman who says, look, baby, your son is eight years old. Eight year old, eight years old. You haven't supported him. Let's let's start supporting your your child. Let's start giving your child some money. Let's let's go through the court system so that we can do this right. So that we can have documentation, you know, of of taking care of your child. And that's what a good woman does for a good man. But if he is unwilling, totally zero unwilling to take care of his child or his children, run. Don't look back, run, don't look back. <laughs> okay, you guys, um, I really enjoyed this. After having to talk about grief and loss, uh, this was fun for me. So I hope it was also fun for you. Again, like I say, when you first meet somebody, they're not going to show you crazy. They're not going to show you all of these things that I mentioned. It's going to be wrapped up in a nice little package. Like I say, it's going to be wrapped up in some some abs, some cleavage, some booty, some uh, nice words, uh, compliments, you know, all of the smell good stuff, all of that stuff that goes along with dating. It's going to be wrapped in a nice, neat package presented to you. Who's going to present you crazy? But crazy is there. Crazy cannot be contained for long. Crazy cannot be hidden for long. So if you just pay attention, open our eyes, ladies, open our eyes men these things should not take us by surprise if we pay attention to the clues if we pay attention to the subtleties if we pay attention to the almost not totally but almost imperceptible then we can see crazy is underneath here and let me run don't look back run don't look back <laughs> love y'all y'all be blessed thank y'all for being a blessed one Thank you for watching my video. If you like this video, and only if you liked it, please click that like button. And if you're on Twitter, retweet it for me. Put it on Twitter. And if you don't follow me on Twitter, I'm so, so blessed one on Twitter. Love y'all. Y'all be blessed.